Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Just a short video, and it's Inter's fault. He's just got his uh, oh, an absolute brilliant idea, quite honestly. He's having trouble with the lights that I sent, simply on, in as much as that they have no holders, they have no means of um, being supported. I mean, when I put them up in, in, last year in my place, I just hooked the wire that you know that lights them up over something in the ceiling and just let them hang because I wanted them to hang vertical which is fine but if you don't want them to hang vertical you've got no way of attaching them to anything <laughs> so he's, he's got a microphone stand now, you know for somebody who's played in bands or anything like that that should have sprung to mind for me but anyway what well, brilliant idea so the actual lamp holders can just clamp into what is it, an expandable clip on the end of an infinitely adjustable stand. Um, it's got a long reach stand, the sort that the old uh, drummers would use to get their microphone under their nose but still, you know, have a stand outside their drum kit. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. So he's done his and he made me feel guilty because... Oh, hang on. I need my pokey stick because I'm not tall enough to reach that light switch. I'm feeling guilty because I've had that light sat there doing nothing for all this time. Sorry, I'm pointing the camera straight at it. And just look how much that lights up. Um, and nothing's too close. It just dawned on me, I've been struggling to think of a way of getting it up in that corner, which is a dark corner. And then I thought, well, hang on, that's always been a dark corner. Stuff's always managed. Um, but because of these two lights, which I do need to turn on now as well. Oh, let's, let, let's, let's have the lot on. Let's dazzle me as well. They've got individual switches on them. The, uh, the spider farmer light hasn't got a switch. You have to turn it on and off at the plug. So... Um, because of the way I wanted these lights to work and actually light up this area, oh, I've just looked at one of them now, now I can't see a flipping thing. Um, a lot of stuff had to be moved over to here. I've actually got quite a lot of orchids along that back bit and on this area. Well, that one light does the lot. And I'm just looking now, totally different colour. These lights up here, the Gemma ones, which are lighting up this area, have suddenly looked a bit dim. Because they've got that purplish glow, even though it's only slight. Whereas this thing, it's, it's pure white light. It, it is full spectrum. Well, that's actually pretty powerful. Now, that's a shame when um, the spider farmer people people contacted me it was the same as Gemma contacted me and said you know we'll send you one of our lights on on condition that you do an unboxing video and a, a visual assessment and then sort of show them set up and um, yeah so uh, we agreed and I liked it so much I went and bought another one and the two little lights that Ince has got were free in the box one in each basically. Now these spider farmer people got in touch with me, the same sort of principle, um, the only difference was I had to buy it off of Amazon but they put the money in my PayPal account to allow me to go and buy it so they didn't have a capability of direct sales, they only sold on Amazon and at the time it was excellent value for money and it is a powerful light there's no doubt about it and it spreads out in quite, in quite a direction, I'm, you know, it's, it's lighting up as far over as here. Um, so it's a good light, but since it was, um, since I bought it, you know, with their money, fair enough, so I didn't pay for it, it was about 120 something pounds on Amazon. And I noticed last time I looked, it's gone up to about 170 pounds, and that's a lot of money for a grow light. But I don't know how that compares with other lights. I haven't got a clue. Um, I've, I had, I've never had any intention of having lights. Now I've got the flipping things coming out in the ear holes. Anyway, um, that's a bright light. And I may even re reconsider and move it back. 
another six inches. I didn't realize it spread out quite that much. You know, we're lighting up from there across to there. And um, the full height of that shelf, all this lot's lit up. Oh, I must put, put my Draculas back in the dark. I've watered them, that's why they're out, they, they drip. Um, and I keep looking at the lights and keep getting dazzled, which I've got dodgy eyes, that doesn't do my eyes any good at all. I can see in the dark, I've got night eyes. Unfortunately, they don't work in bright lights so good as a consequence. Uh, anyway, so uh, all three lights set up now, and um, I must admit that spider farmer light is a lot more powerful than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I might have to move it back a bit. If I move it back six inches to the other side of that beam, it'll spread out that much more as well. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> another let there be light video um, I probably won't do a video tomorrow I've, I've got work to do uh, not grow room work I've got work to do and I want to get back to my Sunday morning chat thing yeah and I need to do some watering and quite honestly tomorrow the most important thing that's happening during the day is the World Cup rugby <laughs> And so until that's finished, I won't be doing anything else. I nearly made a mistake. Um, there's a show on tomorrow. It's the British Orchid Growers Association, their, their autumn show. And I looked at where it is and I thought, actually, that's not that far away. I could get there in less than two hours. Perhaps I'll go. Well, if I hadn't put the news on and heard the sport report about the upcoming game tomorrow, I could have completely forgotten. And then I'd been whiling my way around a orchid show while uh, England were playing, playing in the World Cup final and I'd have been annoyed <laughs> anyway I'll leave it at that this was just to show the uh, the other light up where it's gonna go and that was effortless because I didn't even have to extend the cable all I had to do was find an empty socket and the plug that I took out is for my little strip light up there that never gets used so I can do without that I mean, if I want some light in here, I can just turn on one of the big ones. So that's not a loss. And uh, I'll see you next time. That is a lot of light from that thing. That's a lot of light. Good stuff. Right, see you next time. I decided to film a bit more. Um, this is quite a bit after the last little clip was done. Uh, I think this spider farmer light has been seriously underrated in its power um, I mean it's lighting up in here now that's probably not usable light for plants but it travels sideways a lot more than I was expected it's not a direct beam as such and it expands sideways considerably it's this light up here that's lighting up these plants yeah and obviously it's lighting up everything up there quite bright light here and right down through here right down to the phalaenopsis that weren't getting any light at all um, and into here this light spreads out sideways a lot so I think it may be able to be moved to gain more viable light for more plants and that's simply a matter of moving it back that way away and that will allow it to go further that way and further this way right into this corner and mind you there's some things I don't want in bright light we may have to shuffle stuff around again but there are some things that are not getting any advantage of the um, additional lighting to extend, extend their day lengths. Now quite a few of those things have always done okay without it. But I've got the option by moving things around a bit. I've still got to, I've still got to bear in mind they need their daylight. They need their daytime light. And that comes in from the opposite side to where the lights are. So these these plants along here weren't getting much daytime light really um, I'm almost considering that their main light source is going to be that spider farmer light that's low wattage 
I could have that on all day and not worry too much about the cost. I'm going to have a rethink. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> it's nearly tea time. Well, not far off tea time anyway. Um, yeah, that throws out a lot more light than I thought. Um, obviously, I did put it up as a test a while ago um, to get a video clip to go, you know, to um, comply with what I was asked to do. But that was filmed in bright daylight. Now that the light's gone, I mean, my eyes are quite good at assessing light because I've done so much camera work in my life. I can almost detect what the camera settings would be. And that's bright light. And I think it overpowers the other two lights. So the, gem, the thing is with the Gemma lights, because they've got lenses, they've got a very direct beam. Um, I mean, literally, from a straight line out of the centre of the lens, it's 45 degrees each side. So it's a 90 degree angle in total that spreads out from the light outwards. Um, whereas this thing, it has got no direct beam at all. I mean, I'm getting dazzled standing here and I'm on the side. I'm not anywhere near in the line of fire of that light and I'm getting blobs on my eyes every time I look in its direction. I'm not from these. So I might have to rethink where it goes. It could move back. And I could get quite a few more plants under its uh, line of fire. And who knows, it might even go on all day. I will think. Pause for thought. <laughs> See you next time.